Hi guys, you'd imagine as a solo PvP player, the most common questions people would have for me would be about PvP. But actually the most common question I get asked is, how can I make silver? There are a lot of new players in the game right now, and people want money to spec up, buy premium, give to beggars in the market, I don't really know, but everyone wants money, and they want it quick. Well, today I'm going to show you one of the easiest and most consistent ways of making money. It isn't 100% risk free, but if you're willing to take the risk, it really pays off. We're talking about the faction trade missions. For a long time, these were overlooked in Albion because you needed a transport mount, and if you got dismounted, you were pretty much dead, since you'd be overweight and couldn't move. In a recent patch, SBI changed how carry capacity works on mounts, so now, even when dismounted, you'll still be able to move and not be overweight as long as you weren't overweight while on the mount. This only applies to non-transport mounts, so bears and oxes, etc. are no good for this purpose. Using the transport routes I'll be taking in this video, the small mission will earn you approximately 550k an hour, the medium transport mission will earn you approximately 800k an hour, and the large transport mission will earn you approximately 2.1 million per hour. But this one is a lot riskier than the first options. First of all, we'll have to sign up for your city's faction. Right now, I'm signing up for the Limhurst faction. This will give me a flag next to my name, meaning that I now represent this city. Be aware, other players can also flag up for their own cities, for example Bridgewatch or Fort Sterling. If you see those players anywhere in the Royal Continent, they can attack you, and full loot PvP applies even in blue and yellow zones, meaning you will lose all your items if you die to them. Knowing this, we'll want to make our build as efficient as possible to avoid gankers. Faction trade missions have become increasingly more popular, so you will run into gankers eventually. The reason gankers will specifically target you is because you're transporting valuable faction hearts. When you transport them to another city and back, you will be rewarded with even more hearts of the other city's type of hearts. So in my case, I'll be transporting Limhurst tree hearts, and I'll be receiving Bridgewatch's beast hearts in return. Moving on to the build, this is what I would recommend for each level of trade mission. The tier of gear isn't really important, even 4.1 will do fine to start off. The double bladed staff is a great escape weapon, but it can be swapped for a bloodletter and miscolor if you prefer that. I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of each of the abilities and some tips to avoid gankers before we get started. Your Q ability is the cartwheel. It's a short range dodge roll that can help you escape. If you get hit during the roll, you'll get increased resistances and movement speed for a short duration. The W ability is Stun Run, for using this for the extra 30% movement speed it offers. The E ability is a long range jump ability. Your R ability is called Ambush, it will make you invisible for a long duration, but moving too far from where you casted it will break the invisibility. Your D ability is called Block. It blocks all incoming damage for 2 seconds. The main reason for using this ability is to counter Graveguard Armor, which is a very powerful ganking tool. I'll show you how this works after. And your last ability is called Vengeful Sprint. This gives you movement speed based on how low your health is. The lower your health, the faster you run. The Invisibility Potion makes you invisible for 6 seconds. This is another tool you have to try to confuse the gankers and make an escape. If the enemy manages to hook you with his graveguard armor, indicated by a hook and the sound of a chain, you'll find yourself in big trouble. To avoid this, wait a second after he places the chain on you, then use your block ability to negate the effect. Your undead cape will trigger when your health falls below 25%, turning you invisible. 
Save your demon boots for this moment so you can run away quickly without being seen. For the small transport run, I'm putting in a buy order for 3 tree hearts at 63k each. It only took a couple minutes for the buy order to come through. Once you have the required hearts for the trade mission you're going to do, head to the faction NPC, here you can accept the mission. This is the route I'm going to be taking for the small and medium transports. The red circles indicate safe areas where you can hide from gankers. You can do trade missions from whatever city you'd like, but try to look for some safe routes through yellow zones where reds can't attack you if you're just starting out. This area, indicated by the circle around it, is a Limhurst drop-off point. If you're getting ganked, you can hide there. It will give you a bubble to protect you for as long as you stay there. When you get to the drop-off point, deliver your cargo, it'll give you a new box that you have to return to Limhurst with. A tip when buying the faction hearts is to set up buy orders. You'll get the hearts a lot cheaper if you spend some time setting up buy orders. When you go to sell the hearts, you might want to check the different cities as the price often varies. But in general, the price for hearts is around 65k each. For the medium transport, you're going to need a mount with better carry capacity than the Swift Claw. I'm going with the Swamp Dragon. Even with the Swamp Dragon, I need to eat a pork pie so that I can carry more. One very important note is that if your pie expires and you go overweight, you will fail the mission and lose all your hearts. So make sure to keep track of that timer. An alternative to the Swamp Dragon would be the Wild Boar, but I like the Swamp Dragon better because it doesn't lose its gallop speed even if you run through mobs or get hit by players. Here I run into a ganker. I'm so close to the town that he won't be able to catch me so I just try to shake him off. This is the safe area I was talking about. If you run into trouble, just try to get here and they won't be able to do anything.
When you leave the drop-off point, you gain 30 seconds of invisibility. If you're being followed, this is your chance to fool the gankers and get back home. Time for the large transport run. Now I have the spectral dire bore, since even more carry weight is needed. The spectral dire bore is a great mount for this purpose, since it also has a unique ability to go invisible for a short duration, often giving you enough time to escape or juke the gankers. This was quite a tough run for me. I got ganked multiple times, so I used about half an hour. If you do it at a less active time of day, and you don't get ganked, you can do a run in 20 minutes. Here, someone I passed by messaged me that there might be gankers on the northwest gate, right in the direction I'm heading. I'll show you a trick to avoid gate campers. Find a solo dungeon close to the gate. Go hide in there for 60 seconds until you can get a new bubble. Zone out with the bubble and pass right by them. There were no gankers, but it's better to be on the safe side. Using the underway is riskier than taking the long route, but it's a lot quicker. If you hug the walls perfectly, you can avoid the guards. I spot some gankers, so I start running back to the gate. They know they're not quick enough to get me if I zone, so they give up, and I take the long way around. Even more gankers show up, but I'm really close to the safe area. I'm quite confident that I can juke them and get away.
Once you're in the safe area, they can't touch you. I made a mistake here by taking the invisibility too quick. I could have used the invisibility to escape, but I used it and let it run out. You could either call some friends to help you here, you could just stay here and wait for them to get bored, or make a run for it. I tried to bait out all their CC abilities, and once they did that, I just ran past them. The underway is just too active right now, I'll have to take the long way around. Thank you all for watching, now get out there and earn some money.